Welcome to Real Survivors with me, Leslie Coors Mather. I believe that there is power in hearing people's uplifting stories. And today I've invited somebody who um, I think has an incredible story. Um, Michael, come on in. I wanted to ask you to share with everybody. Hi. Hi there. Leslie. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Great. Fantastically well. Good. Um, I don't know if I can hit all your bullet points. There's a lot. But um, you're both a scientist and a pastor. Um, you've taught in medical school, so you understand science. Um, but you yourself have had a history of uh, health issues. Um, you were diagnosed with multiple myeloma after you had pain in your hip. They did tests. They found a tumor. Um, it destroyed your bone, right? Right. And um, after a biopsy, then that's when you were diagnosed with this incurable disease. They, they considered it incurable disease. Um, that same year, you had... <laughs> How many eye surgeries? Five, five, five eye, surgeries. eye surgeries. Gosh. It was um, a bad year. Yeah. <laughs> radiation killed the tumor. Right. But? Well, the radiation killed the tumor, but the whole concern was multiple myeloma means multiple tumors yes. in your bones. Uh-huh. And so that was the concern. So I actually started chemotherapy. Okay. And so I was starting chemotherapy. Then the tumor didn't destroy my leg entirely. But as I start, but I did eventually break it. You broke your leg. That's and, right. And now yeah. I'm walking on a broken leg. So uh -huh. to solve that, they, they killed the tumor with radiation. Then they put a rod in my femur to hold my leg together, hoping that it would heal. And okay. it never did because the radiation and everything it essentially stopped the bone from healing. And I even had a bone stimulator, which caused bone growth everywhere except where I needed except it. Except where you needed it. Great. <laughs> so, so this went on. I was in excruciating pain. And so finally they decided um, that I needed to get a hip replacement. All along this time, they were also dealing with a multiple myeloma. And so right. I was taking okay. tests for that. I was getting procedures done. And it was absolutely a miraculous time. I knew about this disease and because a good friend of ours actually had died, his wife had died from multiple myeloma. Yeah, you hear those words and it doesn't sound about like a, a good prognosis. Ago. So I remember when I got the diagnosis, it was shocking. And I remember thinking about this and I decided and talking to the Lord that I was not going to have a pity party. I was, I choose not to feel sorry for so myself. So you prayed? I prayed all the time. Okay. And uh, I decided that I really... I wanted to be victorious in this and, and not become a victim and not think mm. of and not let the disease define me huh. and because it's so easy and that was a struggle all through this and prayer really helped. So I'm having all these procedures done and it was miraculous. I would go in to make an appointment with a doctor to see him yeah. and he'd be sitting at the front desk and he says, well, come in right now. That normally doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. <laughs> You know, or I needed a procedure, and so the nurse would call over and say to me, can you do it right now? Right. And rather than waiting two weeks for That's, the procedure. That is it was just, This happened routinely. But what I want to get to is when they put the rod in your, in your leg, they had to stop the chemo. Is that right? What happened is they put the rod in. It didn't heal, so they, they wanted to give me a hip replacement. Yeah. So I had the rod in my leg, and the idea was to take the rod out and replace it with a new hip. So yeah. they had to stop the chemo right. before the hip surgery. Okay. And then after the hip surgery, we'd start chemo again. And so I did the hip surgery, came back a month later, talking to my oncologist. He did blood tests, and he says, well, your numbers haven't gotten worse over this time. Let's just watch it. Came back Even and, though you stopped the chemotherapy. Correct. <laughs> so then I came back a month later, and he checked again. The numbers actually were improving, and it's been improving every month since. And actually now... I multiple myeloma numbers are my numbers are normal and I don't have the disease. Did you ever go back on chemo? No, never. <laughs> and my doctor is an interesting man because as a doctor, of course, he says you're in remission, but he can't account for the difference. No. But I know so, where the difference came from. <laughs> so if somebody were going through something major, where you know a doctor might even say there's not a lot of hope, um, like they did for you, right? What could you say, maybe in one sentence, that would encourage somebody in this situation? Well, for me, I knew the scientific part of it, but I also know God. And all along, he promised he would never leave me or forsake me. Hmm. And all through this, I saw God's hand. And for me, 
it was really interesting to see him helping me through all of the medical stuff using doctors and nurses and uh, technicians and things were, were working really well and then he intervened supernaturally hmm. so the major lesson was that I learned I knew this intellectually from reading the scriptures that God will never leave you or forsake you but it became a reality in my heart okay. that God will never leave me or forsake me wow. and Thank that's you. what I think is available to anybody wow. to walk with God that's really inspiring thank you for sharing and um, I would like to hear your stories as well. You can direct message me on Facebook or on Twitter. I'd love to um, share your story here in person or even Skype with you or read it for you. But I think there's a lot of power in sharing our stories. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Real Survivors. I'm a survivor. Thanks so much.